Spring is here, the flowers breathe their fragrance to the sun. Hey, everybody, welcome to the next episode of the picture biography of Master Empty Cloud. Today is Saturday. February 17th. My name is Hung Shur. I'm glad you're here with us. Welcome. It's Friday, February 16th, back in the Northern Hemisphere and back in California. Glad you're here with us uh, for another uh, series of stories about our grand master, Empty Cloud, and his pilgrimage. So uh, let's see. Let's get started here. We're going to bow to the buddhas three times i'll hit the bell you're welcome to join me please do and then our dharma request is going to come from vera from sao paulo where i'm told it is 11 30 p.m oh my goodness real sincerity okay so let's ring the bell three times and i'm sitting down so i'm going to do three half bows and you're welcome to join me here we go Okay, uh, Vera, if you would like to request Dharma, please go ahead and do it now. Asa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Asa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Namo sadanto suchedo ye olahodi samyao samputo she. Namo suchedo ye olahodi samyao samputo she. Wushang shen shen wei miao fa bai qian wan jie nan sao yu. Wo jin jian wan de shou chi yan jie ru lai chen shi yi. Supreme and wondrous dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Okay, Vera, thank you for the dharma request. Obrigado. Thank you so much. And welcome again, everyone. We're going to acknowledge country here to say we respectfully acknowledge the Kumbumeri people of the Ugambe language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where the monastery is located. 
We pay respects to our elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. 那就是说我们恭敬地承认与刚被与祖的公布马里人是我们四院所在地的传统叙事和守护人我们向过去现在和未来的张征们致敬并且向所有的从未帮弃主权的第一民族的原住民致敬 All right, uh, moving forward here that's our acknowledgement for here in Australia, where I am. I'm here in the Gold Coast of Queensland. Welcome wherever you're listening from. Let's uh, continue with our protocol by joining the bell song. The bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread All throughout the triple world The wondrous sounds that everywhere Fill the Dharma realm with peace May those who hear it gain the strength To follow in faith the Buddha's path and if I could do the Chinese, I would be singing Chung Sheng Chuan San Qian Jie Nei Fo Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xuan Qi Fa Jie He Ping Li Yi Bao Ta No Hou De But because it is beyond me, I'm going to let someone else uh, do the Chinese. We'll make do with the English. Thank you again for joining. Um, I'd like to mention that uh, in Chinese, 如果大家 想听一种流利的普通话翻译，我就就是说，把我所讲的英语翻译成流利的普通话呢，你的软体的控制板的右下角有一个小地球形的东西了，那边就叫 if you would like to hear a Vietnamese translation of my talk, uh, go to the chat box right there on your control panel and you will find a link to the Vietnamese translation right there. Furthermore, uh, if you would like, like Vera just did from Sao Paulo, Brazil, if you would like to uh, request Dharma, we would be delighted if you would join. There in the chat box, there is an email address, which you click on that, send an email to Chan Yu, our fearless coordinator, and you can request Dharma. If you can only do one language, we will help. We'll find a way to support the language you can do and have a friend do the other language. Okay, there we go. And to acknowledge where everyone is from, oh my goodness, let's see. First of all, I want to say here in the Gold Coast, we have a full house today, and this is really my, my vision for what this lecture could become. Um, in For past uh, lecture series, I would be sitting by myself up in my, uh, in my office with the computer on, talking to usually 100 people around the world, but here in the Gold Coast, um, it was always early in the morning. Sometimes Sam and Cliff would come up and sit there and listen and be sincere at, at 6 a.m., you know. Uh, and that meant that everybody listening in China or Taiwan or Hong Kong had to get up at 4 a.m. Not so good. So we thought, why not base this lecture here in the Gold Coast and make it a community event, invite everybody to come after lunch when they've just had a delicious vegetarian meal, and they can see each other and kind of get a sense of a global webcast on Buddha Dharma. So today, my goodness, my wish has come true, fulfilled. Appreciate everybody's willingness to come and sit and listen. We have with us online currently 85 people from uh, Fremont, California, Ukiah, California, 
Gold Coast of Queensland, Inner Mongolia, Balto, uh, just amazing. Vancouver, British Columbia. Alice uh, is either in Los Angeles or in El Cerrito. Let's see, Amara Wee I know is in, uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Aurora is in Sydney. Okay, let's see, Bill is in Cascade, Colorado, a regular listener. Celeste's in Hong Kong, Connie's in Sunnyvale, uh, Cynthia's in Saratoga, hi Cynthia. Okay, uh, Miss Ni is in Heilongjiang, Manchuria. Duc Levin is in, where? La Belle Provence de Quebec. Quebec, Ontario, uh, Canada, so French Canada. Round Rock, Texas, Ethan and Justin are there. Okay, uh, Mr. Sung is in Tianjin. Guohong is in Alameda. Let's see here. Jane is in Berkeley, Jason's in Santa Clara. Jeffrey's in Round Rock, Texas, down in Texas. Jensen's in Malaysia, okay, not in uh, Indonesia, okay, welcome. Johan is in Malaysia, Katie's in Union City. Leah's in Waterloo, Ontario. Lewis and Christine are in LA. Uh, let's see, Lynn Lau's in Kansas. Liz is in New York City's Chinatown. Uh, let's see here, Liaoning, San, the San Francisco, San Jose. Mesa, Arizona, Calgary, Alberta. Where else? Let's see here. Sarah's in Tennessee. Okay, welcome. Baltimore, Maryland, Seattle, San Jose, Bay Area, Ukiah. Where else? Let's see here. Neymangu, Baotou Shi. Okay, Shanghai, Hangzhou. Uh, where else? Jiangsu, Jilin, uh, uh, Xini, na jiu shi, Audai Liya. Liaoning, uh, Heilongjiang. Uh, let's see here, Heilongjiang. Beijing, ah. Kan kan jin tian yo mei yo taipei lai de, ah. Guan zhong. Hei long jiang, Beijing, ah. Shan xi, bao ji. Hei long jiang, fu jian, quan zhou. Yo bao zhou, wah, zui duo jiu shi nei mong gu jin tian. Ah, an hui, ah, huai nan shi. Shan dong, hei long jiang, Beijing, Beijing, Beijing. Tang shan, Hebei, Beijing. Wah, kong fa Beijing, kai pao dao qian bian. Okay, Jiangsu, Baotou, Shenzhen, uh, Shenzhen, Nanjing, Nanhai, Zhongguo, Liaoning, Guangdong, uh, Jiangsu, Shanghai, Ayo, Yiga, Taiwan, and the Mayo, Nikan, oh, do, do, the Jabian, um, Soyo, Jilly, Jo. Okay, ah, uh, there we go, that's fun. Now, um, I want to tell everybody that starting last week, our stories are about. Master Empty Cloud, um, doing a pilgrimage, three steps, one bow. And I said, we're going to be with him doing his pilgrimage for quite a few weeks. Guess how many episodes have to do with three steps, one bow? The t answer is 34. 34 out of 200 episodes have to do with Master Empty Cloud's Sanbu Ipai pilgrimage. So, one thing we learned is it takes took a while. It was uh, a, a long process for him. Um, and there, uh, the things that happened during his pilgrimage are, uh, in Chinese you say, things that go beyond words and thoughts. You can't think of them, you can't put it into words. For example, he died twice and was revived, uh, both times by a, an individual who later we found out was in fact a body transformed by Manjushri, Manjushri Bodhisattva. Manjushri Pusa came out to save Master Empty Cloud once from starvation, once from freezing and the illness that that you get when you're exposed to the elements. So uh, that's the kind of, that's the quality of uh, miraculous stories that we're going to encounter as we cover the next 34 episodes of Master Empty Clouds pilgrimage. So let us begin and here we go. Uh, did, oops, okay, I've got to go find my, here we are. 
right there. I parked it and then there it is, right there, brand new. Okay. Here we are. Pardon the scrolling here. This was last week. Uh, okay. And, uh, okay, I won't interpret. I'll show and not tell. Here we are. The title this week is called Chang Bai Guo Su Zhou. And uh, by the way, I should also mention last week people asked questions. I didn't have time at the end to answer. I'll answer them today. Here we go. Ready? Uh, this is not a palms together. 43 years old. The year is 1882. 从湖州复起乡叩拜如前Leaving the city of Huzhou, the master offered incense and continued to bow as he had done before. People along the roadside who saw him respectfully placed their palms together and recited the Buddha's name. Others joyfully supported his practice by bowing along behind him. Reaching Suzhou, the master met many faithful believers in the Triple Jewel, both good men and faithful women. Many of these people received the three refuges from him. People from all walks of life respectfully welcomed him. The news of his remarkable pilgrimage continued to spread quickly. Okay, what can we learn from the Chinese? Let's take a look here. Um, last week we we saw this remarkable picture of the monks who initially supported Master Empty Cloud. This one here in particular, he's carrying a big, 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 big stick of incense. And the, uh, there are two monks here who are carrying packs. And here is uh, a supporting monk who's bowing, apparently bowing along. The monk in front, of course, is our teacher, Master Empty Cloud. So there's apparently a tradition in the Chinese version of Three Steps, One Bow that you bow with lit incense when you can. Um, we kind of marveled at that. And uh, we asked Shifu, and of course he said, Where are you? can you show me the incense that you're going to use? We said, we're sure we don't have any. He said, right, this is not going to happen. So in America, uh, incense is not, we don't have incense that large, right? And while we could have started a cottage industry uh, in inviting people to make incense that big, no. So we did away with that incense. But here, where it says qi xiang, once again, they qi xiang, I suspect because uh, those, we're going to find out that those four companions uh, stopped, they quit. So Master Empty Cloud has to go down to the ground with his head, his hands, and his knees. So there's no, nobody to hold the incense. I'm sure he lights maybe a stick as he begins his chanting in the morning, doing salku, but he did away with incense because there simply weren't enough hands but he bowed his head as before. And the, um, the, the theme, the thrust, the, the essential point of this episode is the people around him, the people who witnessed this monk. So here's, here is somebody still holding incense, but look at, around. These are lay people from the 
the, the late Qing Chao, the late Qing dynasty, who are watching. They're seeing this monk bow by, and they're moved. You see there's, these are shaved heads, these are his companions, but these are lay people, men and women, and they see this individual put his body down to the ground, slowly stand up again, put his palms together, make three steps, and bow down to the ground again, and they want to join him. They want to find out, what is he doing? What's going on? What's it like to, to have this experience of being prone on the ground with no Buddha in front of you, no bowing bench, no roof over your head? What's it like? to be out in the weather, under the sun, in the wind, open to anybody who's coming around, and yet you are focused on something kind of magical. They don't know, is he praying? Is he out of his body? Is he having some mystical experience, right? Notice in the, in the picture here, there's a pagoda up high on a hillside. He's bowing into Suzhou. Those are the two characters here on the city walls. There are boats out on the, the river or the water. There are homes, farms here outside the city gates. Very interesting, kind of magical. What's going on? And so what happens is people bow along. People join in. And... Uh, the, uh, in my, when I did my pilgrimage, my three steps, one bow, the thing that was most, one of the things that was the most memorable were the people that we met. And when I was doing my pilgrimage, I didn't talk. I, I had a vow of silence. So people had to deal with me without interpretation, just their own experience of this, uh, bald-headed American guy bowing down to the ground. What's going on? They had to, to uh, you know, poke their neighbor. What, what's he doing? What's he doing here? Right, to get an answer. So, here is uh, Shrifu's verse. He says, Shan cai nan san yue bai cheng yan shui yi xi Pan Hong Meng, Gong Chao Wu Tai, Hu Su Jie, Shan Nan Xin Nu, Pu Fu Xing. Okay. The youth Sudana travels south through 100 cities. Enduring the rigors of the road, he surveyed the ancient mysteries. As the master journeyed to Wu Tai Mountain through the regions of Huzhou and Suzhou, Good men and faithful women bowed along with him. This is a beautiful verse because he, Shifu, this, is, this verse is from Master Shenhua, of course, and he brings in Shansai Tongzi, Sudana, uh, the pilgrim in the Avatamsaka Sutra's last chapter called Ru Fa Jieping, entering the Dharma realm, where Sudana, the, the hero, the pilgrim, goes. Shansai Nansan goes south to 53 teachers, one by one by one, seeking the Bodhisattva path and instruction in the Dharma. So uh, it says 100 cities, Bai Chang, that's the kind of the, uh, the, the story of our epic uh, journey of masters, of, of Shansai Tongzi. And <coughs> it, uh, what happens to you while the bowing itself is very slow. You slowly put your body to the ground and then you stand up and you take three steps and you do it again. And it's kind of like doing uh, a steady yoga for sometimes eight hours a day. And what happens is your heartbeat synchronizes, your breathing synchronizes, your digestion synchronizes, your, your uh, sleep cycles, you know. You're slowly going through a fa man, a dharma gate, a dharma door that um, has a profound impact on every aspect 
of your life because why you're doing it with your body this is not an idea this is not a, an, a thought this is not a an argument or a principle you're actually putting your head and your heart down to the ground uh, over and over and over through the, the morning to the noon to the afternoon to the evening and then again in the morning over and over and over so what happens is this uh, for the, the people who are doing it in this case there are lay people joining him the um, the experience transforms you uh, physically and then of course the question is what are you doing with your mind while you are bowing like this and uh, one of the questions that came up not last week but the week before was what was your method and uh, my method along with uh, former Bhikshu Hung Chao Marty Verhoeven was we ask Shurfu what to do and uh, we said uh, I, I saw that the previous our previous three steps one bow and I want to show everybody go here if you would like to know about the first American three steps one bow uh, go out to Amazon or to your local bookseller and order three steps one bow this is co-written by Bhikshu Hung Ju and Bhikshu Hung Yo. Uh, this is incomplete. It should say Bhikshu Hung Ju, Tim Testu, Bhikshu Hung Yo, David Bernstein, but it's all right. Uh, inspired by the 3,000 mile pilgrimage across China made by great master Xu Yin, ah, in 1883, Hung Ju decided to embark on his own three steps on bow from San Francisco to Seattle. Uh, with the help of close friend Bhikshu Hung Yo, he completed his 1,100 mile journey in 10 months. He went really fast. Shrifu told him to slow down. He went really fast. From 1973 to, uh, to 1974, every three steps, he bowed in full prostration of the ground, praying for world peace, seeking spiritual awakening. Um, it's based on the journal that the two monks kept during their pilgrimage. And uh, it's quite wonderful because you get to meet Master Hua, you get to meet Gold Mountain Monastery, the Sangha, and there's a new 40th anniversary edition with uh, Tim's daughter, Jeanette, that she wrote. It's a wonderful addition to it. So that's the first, the first Three Steps, One Bow pilgrimage in North America. Um, I have it on my Kindle. You can get the Kindle edition. I think it's 10 bucks. Highly recommended. And if you like it, I would encourage folks, let's see, what is a Kindle price? Uh, you can buy a paperback for $27. The Kindle edition, I think, is $10. Bucks. Um, if you are inspired by it, please do leave a review down here. You have to register on Kindle on Amazon, but those reviews really, really matter. And I see there's nobody from Australia so far who has left a review. On the uh, can, uh, Amazon US, there are reviews. But if this is something that, that appeals to you, please do download it. Put it on your Kindle. Uh, your Kindle can be on your phone or on your computer or on your Kindle app, your, your device. Um, those reviews go a long way to helping us spread the Dharma. Okay. so. We had seen the first three steps on bow take a, uh, like a, a Chinatown food cart, the old ladies, the, the, the elderly folks who go to the market. They pull a little vegetable cart behind them on their way back to their apartment. You've seen those uh, vegetable carts. Um, Bhikshu Hung Yo, the Dharma protector, adapted one to put their tents, their sleeping bags, uh, their, you know, raincoats in the cart. And he pulled it along behind while uh, Bhikshu Hung Ju did the bowing. 
and then uh, Hung Yo did the bowing that he could along behind when, he, when they had the opportunity. So we saw that. We said, uh, Shifu, should we get something like that? Shifu said, nah. He said, you, this is not going to work. It won't survive, he said. Uh, and we're, okay, well, I don't know what we're going to do. So we got to Los Angeles, and this being Los Angeles, we got a station wagon, we got a car. <laughs> we didn't need two wheels of the vegetable cart. We got four wheels and a station wagon. And we spent the night at, in, at night in the, the car, sleeping, sitting up. And then by day, we were out in the elements. So that way, for the next uh, two and a half years, when we started, we never uh, went indoors. We spent the next two and a half years living outdoors. So I was truly homeless. Anyway, we asked Master Hua, we said, Shifu, what, what method? Uh, I thought maybe, at first I thought I could keep the sutra in front of me and bai jing, bow to each character in the sutra and just walk and look at the, at the sutra and turn the pages as we went. Well, that was c clearly impractical because we were on the side of the Pacific Ocean. We were at the beach on Highway 1, uh, the Pacific Coast Highway. It's often misty, it's often foggy, it's often cloudy, and the sutra would not survive. So Master Hua said, here's what you do. He said, the title of the sutra has the merit and virtue of the principles already in it. So what you do, every time you bow, bow down and say, Namo Da Fang Guang Fu Hua Yan Jing. And then when you stand up, you can say, Hua Yan Hai Hui Fu Pu Sa. Recite the name of the sutra with every bow. And he said, that will uh, keep the energy of the Avatamsaka Sutra um, going. That, that keeps the, the merit and virtue of the title alive in your minds as you bow. And then he said, uh, now, while you're down on the ground, he said, this is a perfect opportunity for you to repent of all the, the uh, unskillful or harmful things that you've done through your many lifetimes, not just this lifetime, but many lifetimes. So while you're down at the, on the ground, you can recite Samantabhadra Bodhisattva's uh, repentance verse. Uh, Wangshi so zao, juo ye, jie yu wu shi, tan chan chi, song shen yu yi, chi so sheng, yi che, wo jin jie chan wei. For all the harmful things I've done with my body, speech, and mind, from beginningless greed, anger, and stupidity, through lifetimes without number, to this very day, I now repent, and I vow to change entirely. He said, if you can recite that in Chinese quickly while you're down there, that will keep your mind from having so many false thoughts. He said. So he said, that's good. Now, when you step, that's another opportunity to cultivate. So he said, here's what you do. First step, Namo Buddha. Second step, Namo Dharma. Third step, Namo Sangha. So just as it says here in our verse, in our story today, Gui Yi Zhe Yi Fu Bu Shao. So, I take refuge with the Buddha, one step. I take refuge with the Dharma, two steps. I take refuge with the Sangha, three steps. Namo Da Fang Guang Fu Hua Yan, Namo Da Fang Guang Fu Hua Yan Jing, Wang Shi Suo Zhao Zhuo Ye, the verse, Hua Yan Hai Hui Fu Pu Sa, stand up. Namo Buddha, Namo Dharma, Namo Sangha. He said, that's your method, and that should keep your mind free of false thoughts if you're really sincere. So that's what we did. Uh, reciting the name of the sutra to bow down, the repentance verse from the Avatamsaka while we were bowing, and then the name of the assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas when we stand up, and then the three refuges, one, two, three. So that was our method. That was uh, a, lot, a lot of busyness, but uh, uh, kept, us, uh, kept us active and connected to the sutra, and uh, when you know you're thinking, what's it like? 
when everything is very cool and copacetic and everything is very mellow and very calm and peaceful, um, that seems like a lot of work to do with your mind. Your body is bowing, your mind is doing all of this mindfulness. What about when people are throwing uh, beer cans at your head? What about when people are pr uh, having a Bible thrust in your face and telling you that Jesus sees everything that you're doing as filthy rags and you cannot work your way to heaven, don't you know you're going to hell? Uh, over and over and over, shouting at you, preaching you, saving you with the gospel over and over. It's really helpful to have Namo Dafang Guangfo Hua Yin Jing Wang Shi So Zhao Zhu O Ye Hua Yin Hai Hui Fu Fu Sa Namo Fu Namo Fa. So having that simple mindfulness um, is very useful when conditions are not ideal outside you which is mm, maybe half the time. So uh, that Shurfu giving us that method proved to be a lifesaver indeed in many, many, many ways, saving your lives. So uh, I thought another thing, what do you do when we have, um, we've got uh, 34 three sets one bow stories to share and I thought, People maybe don't know that we did a lot of, Marty and I both were folk singers back in the day. So we have gathered a bunch of uh, folk songs for, from Three Steps, One Bow, which I thought would be fun because they're original. And we're reflecting now, not only on Master Empty Clouds, Three Steps, One Bow, but also on Tim Testu, Bhikshu Hongju, and Hong Yo's Three Steps on Bao. And then we have my experience too. So. Find the gate, hurry up now, don't be late. Leave the false and find the true. Ten thousand Buddhas inside of you. How then and turn around, look inside and see. Is it black or white? Is it up or down? In the sky, on the ground. inside and see strange behavior of bowing to the ground every three steps. What could be weirder, right? Hey, weirdo, what are you doing kissing the ground? What do you get out of that? Said many an observer. <laughs> honk, honk, honk. See if you can squash his head with your pickup truck. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay, now the same year, 1882, 43 years old, Moving forward, he says, what? Zi pu to shan fa hua an, qi xiang zhi si chan ren, zhong tu jue de jian nan, lü gao tui, 
，公完死劝之，令勿生退至。至此，四人决意告别，公观其退意已定，只可听之。呜呼！是尊雪山修道，是从者，皆皆此去，道律不易也。Okay, the four Chan monks who started with the master from Fahua Temple on Puto Mountain began to feel the adversity and difficulty of the journey, and often talked about quitting. The master exhorted them with kind words, hoping they would not lose their resolve. Now the foursome had made up their minds; they would say goodbye. The master could only give his permission once he learned of their firm intent to withdraw. Alas, when the world honored one cultivated in the Himalayas, even his four attendants left him. Finding companions along the way has always been hard. Okay, similar, similar to what? Similar to the story、uh, of the Buddha,、um, when. He、uh, so I, I'm ahead of myself. Let's take a look at at the story here. So they started from Putoshan. We saw them holding incense and、uh, putting their packs on their backs and bowing along. And what happens is、um, number one, it's pretty boring. Number two, it's very slow. Number three, it's hard on your body. Number four, it's hard on your mind.、Um, when、uh, last week I mentioned that、um, one of the phenomena that happens when you bow is images arise in your mind, and people. I mentioned、uh, how you know things that you had forgotten tend to surface and emerge, and people picked up on that right away because、um, I mentioned. The the potential, the possibility, that when you put your head and your heart on the same level, but you're awake,、um, images from your unconscious could arise to consciousness.、Um, people picked up on that and and wanted to know more about that. That is a theory of mine to say that's really going on.、Um, that if you're bowing, you'll have the same experience as when you're dreaming at night. Uh, not for sure, and it is not the case that that is supposed to happen. And that would,、uh, if I gave people the impression that the experience that I had is the standard experience, this should be happening. That's a misunderstanding. Okay, and I shouldn't, probably shouldn't dangle it out there for people to hear、um, without clear、uh, disclaimer on it. So, what what? The reason,、uh, so when I was bowing,、um, strange memories from my childhood emerged,、uh, out without any explanation, without any preparation, and I was trying to find an explanation. Why did that happen? I'd be bowing along on an isolated corner of the free of the highway, and I'd remembered something that had been a kind of a traumatic experience from. When I was 10 years old, and I, I was looking for an explanation, so I thought maybe this is like dreaming at night. Only I'm awake because the eighth consciousness puts images across to the sixth, you know. And I need to say that's only my theory, and I don't. There aren't enough people. <laughs> We don't have enough of a subject database to test. Uh, these con- these theories, because why? Not that many people do prolong bowing. However, I just put that out there to say maybe that's what's happening, because it's kind of remarkable how、um, you can be bowing. Very it seems very slow, very quiet, and suddenly you're thrown back into some experience that that、uh, happened to you years and years ago. Or perhaps even longer than that can happen. What's going on?、Um, we need more people to do more bowing before we can say, "Ah,、oh, that's the theory. That's here's our database sample." Right. So 
Um, I'm going to have to uh, uh, just leave it there for people who said, oh, is this, uh, can I expect that I'll be emptying out my eighth consciousness while I bow? Not for sure. And if it does happen, don't attach to it. If it doesn't happen, don't, don't regret that it's not happening. Okay, so it's just my own experience. The point of that is to say bowing is difficult, just like it says here. The monks began to feel the adversity and difficulty of the journey and often talked about quitting. Um, putting your body down on the roadside, on the ground, over and over uh, is not clean. You wind up covered in dirt or whatever snow or fog or water. It's raining. Um, it's also hard in your mind because it's very slow. There's not a lot of input. And in, in my case, uh, bowing along Highway 1 in California, nobody had ever seen big shoes outdoors. Nobody had ever seen big shoes bowing outdoors. So we got a lot of uh, curiosity, let's say. Um, in China, more people, number one, they looked at a monk and they said, oh, oh, this is a monk. They, they knew what a monk was. They maybe not, didn't know what he was doing, but pretty quickly, it's going to say, oh, and he can't, 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 he can't. So, at least they had a context for it. Uh, when you're the one that people are talking about, like these four monks who were supporting him, it's harder because you have not made the vow. Or perhaps you made a vow, but you were right? They were following along. Uh, maybe they were hoping to get enlightened and that idea went away very quickly. It's hard to know. But in any case, Master Hua, Master Xu Lao's four companions retreated. They lost their resolve. Tui Xin, right? So, what was he going to do, Master Empty Cloud? He could say, do not, do not, I forbid you. What a quitter. No, he couldn't do any of those things. He couldn't shame them, he couldn't scold them, he couldn't, you know, order them. They were volunteers. You can't force people to cultivate. Because it's, it's too real. This is real... Uh, personal experience of putting your body to the ground in public outdoors. If you're not committed to it, it's very easy to just think, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. So, Master Empty Cloud could only give his permission and say, Chufu ni, you know, Ami uh, Tofu. So, we know that the Buddha, too, uh, was abandoned by five of his relatives, the five bhikshus, who originally had been ordered by their families to go out and keep the prince, the future prince, company. Three of them uh, saw that when he quit his fasting practice, they said, oh, he's just too soft. He's retreated. We're not going to support him. Two of the five bhikshus who saw the Buddha accept uh, uh, you know, sit there when his bones were showing, they said, it's too bitter, we can't do it. So five people retreated from the Buddha's own experience. Uh, the conclusion, what is it? Dao lu bu yi ye, right? Finding companions has always been hard. Here he is, by himself, alone. So, now, um, when I did my pilgrimage, I had uh, a station wagon to put my sleeping bag in, and it was stolen twice along the way. Uh, my meditation cushion was stolen. Uh, the only thing that wasn't stolen was our sutra and the picture of, of Master Hua. <laughs> Everything else uh, we left behind on the road. So Master Hua's instructions to us was, do not take anything that other people could possibly want because you will lose it. 
Now, look at Master Empty Cloud. His robe is made of patches. Sheriff was teaching, before we left Los Angeles, we lost all the good stuff uh, out of the car. People just broke into it and stole it. Stole from monks. Yep. yep. But um, you can see these individuals are not bowing along. They're looking over their shoulder. They're giving the side eye. You know, what's this? This person is not interested. He is on his own outside of the city gates now. Difficult. This is bitter. That's his vow. He made the vow. The vow supported him as he bowed. Shouldering a great mission, he experienced bitter suffering. He endured hunger and physical exhaustion. Without companions, unattached, relying on nothing, practicing alone, bowing alone, he resolutely forged ahead. So there's, it's a great photo, a uh, great painting. This, this really does tell the story, this uh, etching, whatever it is, that, uh, this medium. There he is by himself in a patched robe, um, putting his head to the ground. Yeah, with very little support. In fact, none. They have retreated. Quite, quite amazing, uh, going on alone. So um, you've seen out on Amazon uh, the first American three steps one bow. Um, here is the book, the hard print book that we are lecturing from. This is the pictorial biography of Venerable Master Shuyin. It's in two volumes. Um, and still available. It's out there, available. It's also on Kindle. And again, as I mentioned, um, if people would like to leave a review, it really matters. Um, other people read the review, and here is Michael Duncan said, very important book for anyone seeking more information on an amazing spiritual leader of Zen Master Empty Cloud. Here is a review in Portuguese from Brazil. Look at that. Um autentico, Mr. Chan. Yeah. Wonderful drawings depicting the life. Okay, so there is a, that is available. This is the book we're lecturing from. There are two volumes. Furthermore, if anybody is interested in my pilgrimage, here is uh, Highway Dharma Letters. Two Buddhist pilgrims write to their teacher. Uh, this is a collection of letters written by myself and Martin Verhoeven. There it is. We've got some reviews that are very helpful. Extraordinary. Rarely are bowing pilgrimages undertaken. No kidding. <laughs> this one was accompanied with a brilliant, boldly honest daily journal. Sincere journey. Sincere, honest. Okay, wry and profound. All right, thank you for the review. We could use some more reviews. People will, they do, those reviews really matter. Okay, so um, with this in mind, we've got more songs to help the medicine go down. And here's, these are all Three Steps, One Bow songs written from the pilgrimage, written on the pilgrimage. So I wanted to share one more with everybody. This is originally a Tom Paxton song. Um, which we adapted. It's a long and dusty road It's a hard and heavy load Folks that we meet ain't always kind They aren't bad and they aren't good They just do the best they could Some of them try to ease our troubling mind 
to the city of the Buddhas, we are bowing, bowing down. To the city of the Buddhas, we are bowing. Had a life and it was fine, lots of friends, food and wine. Spent my blessings till I went insane. But I was too blind to see, they were all afflicting me. Good times are just another kind of pain. To the city of the Buddhas we are bowing, bowing down. To the city of the Buddhas we are bowing. There's a good and wise advisor who will lead you to the way. In the golden mountain by the San Francisco Bay. And sometimes when the bowing's true, his light comes shining through. His kindness isn't easy to repay. To the city of the Buddhas we are bowing, bowing down. To the city of the Buddhas we are bowing. There's a bunch of these, and they haven't ever been recorded. I think one of them has been recorded at this point. So you get to hear um, for the first time, such as, I've been working on my huato all the live long day. I've been bowing with my huato, my afflictions fall away. Who is mindful of the Buddha? Form is empty, emptiness is form. Stop the thoughts where they're arising and you won't be reborn. Is that going to make it to the top 40? I don't think so. All right. Good. Okay. So um, that is, um, that's our, the, I did answer your questions. Here were the questions such as, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Connie said, I'm a girl. I can't go bow in the street. Can I bow in my own room all the same? If it doesn't include three steps, only one in one bow is it as effective? So um, the answer is um, three steps, one bow is a particular method of practice designed for traveling outside. And if uh, you're right, um, not only could girls find it difficult now to practice outside, it's not appropriate. Uh, given the lawless nature of the highway. Um, now we're in a time with drive-by shootings and such things. Uh, and there's a real polarization in particularly America right now. So uh, Master Hua said after our three steps on bow, he said probably um, this won't happen again outdoors uh, in the U.S., um, so he was there. You saw the two of us bowing. Master Hua invisibly was there beside us, uh, keeping us safe over and over. We know that is a fact. Um, although he didn't, you didn't see him. His, you could say we were kind of in the palm of his hand. So no, I don't think this is a suitable method in America now. People do chao shan, 
in Taiwan, in China, in Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, um, in Buddhist countries where it's more understood. However, nothing is stopping you from bowing indoors, um, in your, you know, apartment, in your living room, in your bedroom. Just bow sincerely. The three steps is because you're trying to cover ground from this place to that place. So when you can't do it outdoors, do something different. Adopt and adjust. Up, adapt your, your situation. Uh, adapt the practice to your situation. And certainly, bowing is, is a wonderful, incredible, fine practice. You don't have to do three steps on bow if the situation doesn't allow it. Okay? It's time. Uh, so that's... Uh, We'll, I will collect all of your questions. Somebody just asked another question. I'll collect them. Bow in the backyard, bow in the parking garage. Absolutely, do it. Do it. And when your neighbors come and ask you what in the world, you can say, uh, I'm bowing for a more peaceful parking lot. I want there to be fewer accidents on the highway, globally, worldwide. And they'll go, that's weird. And you go, mm-hmm, try it, join me. Be a little weird. It doesn't hurt you at all. Okay. Uh, time to dedicate merit. See you all next week. Thank you for joining. We have 107 of us online today. Okay. Here we go. Please make a wish. Dedicated as far as your mind will go. Here we go. Okay, again, I'm going to ring the bell. You're welcome to do three half bows from where you're sitting. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. That's going to do it for us for this week. See you all next week. Amitofo, everybody. Bye now.